after about an entire month back home in Wisconsin and Minnesota. We're finally ready to get back on the road. And where are we headed to today? Ultimately, we're going to Indiana. Tonight, we'll probably land somewhere near Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, we don't know where we're going yet. <laughs> we're gonna pick that out on the road. We're gonna do like a Cracker Barrel or Cabela's or hopefully not a Walmart, but we're just gonna wing it and drive as far as we can and then pick out a spot to spend the night. And then we're gonna head to Indiana tomorrow. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to being at a campground with full hookups and I'm gonna take the longest shower I've ever taken in the RV. We spent three weeks at a friend's house in Minnesota mooch docking and we made it. And thank you for that. Yeah. It was a beautiful spot. Three weeks we made it on our black tank and our gray tank and our fresh water tank. We they, were being super frugal from day one. They did provide p power which helped a ton because it's summertime and it's hot and we had a few 90 degree days so it was nice to have the air conditioner running we have 70 gallons of fresh water and 40 gray and 40 black and that's just that's not enough to take showers every day wash dishes uh it's just not enough so we really really did stretch it we're at the dump station right now and somebody wants to dump and we're taking up the we're spot. hogging we're hogging so next stop will be our cracker barrel or cabela's somewhere along the road and we'll pick it up there <gasps> Elkhart is in the northern part of Indiana. It's very close to Lake Michigan and the state of Michigan. And we don't know if we're gonna dip up there. We really do wanna do a lot more in Michigan. Um, and maybe we have a little bit of time to do that before we start heading on after our visit here. At this point in our videos, I don't know if we have mentioned our new 12 volt fridge that we got from our friends at Dometic, but that thing has been excellent to have. And I've been talking about getting rid of that RV fridge. Since the day we got it. <laughs> exactly. A uh, fridge vent here, and we're planning on replacing this with a 12 volt fridge. I wish there was an option to just get that from the factory because there's a hole, big hole right here in the side of your RV. And right up on top, there's a vent also for the RV absorption propane fridges and we want a 12 volt so it's kind of a bummer that we have to you know have these big holes in here when we're not even going to be using them it is a great size fridge but since it is a propane fridge aaron said already that we do plan to sell this and replace it with a dometic 10 cubic foot yep and that's going to be a beautiful fridge to put in here we're going to get a lot of extra space and the best part is it's the same footprint so we'll be able to just pull this one out drop the new one in bada bing bada boom it's gonna be easy and we're gonna love it i'm pretty sure i'm gonna do an installation and review video because i think it's pretty important at least for us to move from 12 volt or move to 12 volt from the old rv style fridge this new one just makes so much more sense in our lifestyle and especially with our big electrical system and our solar we don't need to be burning and wasting propane and we got sun power baby and let's not forget to talk about our big appetites yeah and we need that extra space it is 25 percent larger in the same space so an eight cubic foot rv fridge now is a 10 cubic foot dc compressor fridge and it's more beautiful it is more beautiful much more aesthetically pleasing looks a lot more modern i love it except do you remember that little dent in the back of our truck that i showed you before we have one of those in our fridge now too 
Oopsie. <laughs> Just pulled off at a truck stop. We're still getting used to our TSD logistics card. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard of these. They've been around forever. We just, just got one, even though we've had a diesel in our Sprinter van and our truck is of course diesel. Um, but 432 is the discount price, 498 is the billboard price. So a pretty good discount at this location. Right across the street is a Loves and it's only 470 so only like 28 cents off there but pretty good deal and it's pretty slick they have def at the lane so you can always top off your def and you don't have to worry about as much carrying that big box of def around and we're kind of enjoying it it's nice and easy for the truck and trailer and saving a little bit of money Louie. I guess the biggest downside of truck stops is usually they don't have the best grass for like dogs. Some of them do, but a lot of them are just concrete and some of them are pretty dirty too. There's a lot of spilled grease and diesel oil in some of the lanes, but that's the trade-off. Hello. All right, we'll be back. Pretty easy, but I always gotta read the directions every time because we don't do it that often. And they're always the fast pumps too. And they don't have that $100 cutoff, which doesn't cut it nowadays. I was pretty quick. Pumped $90 in about 20 seconds. And then you can just do the def fluid right after, same transaction. Super, super convenient. Nice and easy, but I spilled a little. You don't want to get that def fluid on your paint. So I just checked the battery in the RV because mm -hmm. I was talking about the fridge earlier and one of the main differences is we used to have to run our RV fridge on electric while we're traveling you know to be safe not running propane while we're driving and it takes a constant like 300 watts of power and let's be honest we don't like burning propane that's very true <laughs> so we tried to run it on as electric as much as we could but it's 300 watts very very constant and we have 1200 watts of solar but at different parts of the day early in the morning later in the evening shade rain whatever you might not even be over that amount most of the time it was okay in the middle of the day but sometimes um, the fridge would take our battery down and then when we get to the location where we're at like tonight we're going to cracker barrel uh we might need to run that ac for a it's little hot, bit yeah it's very hot and yeah. stuffy the trailer is already hot this fridge takes like a max of 120 watts i believe on average it's about 50 watts it's such a small amount of power that i mean our 1200 watts is like overkill so so you're happy yeah and even the small truck draw that we get from the seven pin trailer you know there's that little like five amps we get from our truck back to the rv just by the trailer plug the seven pin mm -hmm. that's enough to run the fridge you don't even really? need solar. So if we didn't even have solar, because I tested it one time, I shut the solar panels off and we just drove down the road powering the RV with our truck, five amps, that's all it does. It's about 50 watts, something like that. Mm. And it ran the fridge, so. Mm. That's good to know. Oh, you know, something else that I just discovered. I was filling up the def fluid. I couldn't even squeeze a, a gallon in there because we really didn't need that much, but I was, you know. Topping it off. I was guessing, I was topping it off. <laughs> And it started dripping from underneath the truck. So that means it has some type of safety overflow oh. where it comes out from the filler tube down to the tank. I and that's a, that's a big deal. I heard it's really bad to overflow your death. Why? I don't know the reasons. I just heard, don't do it.
ran out of water. I had to get some more. Just like the camping days, we had to sneak a little bit of water from the rest area. We ran completely out. I just hit the, the toilet to flush it and I heard the pump go dry, so. The dreaded pump struggle. Yeah, so we're gonna throw a little bit of water in to get us through tonight and tomorrow. We just need a couple hand washes, a couple meals. The fill was super slow. It took me five minutes of holding this bag, like. <laughs> Hopefully this works. We've never done this before. Were people looking at you funny? Probably. I was trying not to make eye contact. Yeah, that's always best. That kind of works. Now you just need somebody to squeeze that bag for you. I would try to help you, but I don't want to drop this camera. I don't need to make it help, man. <laughs> trying to filling her up. Just trying to speed it up a little bit. Kick it with my foot. It's actually draining pretty good. This one has this uh, big nozzle on it. Yeah. It's like high flow nozzle. God, I saw you walking back with that and I just got flashbacks to tent life. Yeah. Oh, actually, as I was walking out, a guy was walking in. He looked at me, looked at my five gallon bag of water, looked at me, gave me a smirk, and I gave him a smirk. <laughs> like, your life looks fun, huh? That's it. That was that's, not, that's not gonna give me the shower I wanted tonight. No, no shower. We're in survival mode right now. Well, we paid for the dump, and they said there was water included, but it no water. Questionable water. Yeah. We've used those pump waters before, and we're still alive. I don't know. When the water's six inches from the sewer dump, got to be careful. Always fun to be at a Cracker Barrel. It always feels like home. It does. I had a little trouble with the, the manual auto level system, but uh, maybe that's just because I haven't used it for like a month. So we're back. We got our levelers down. We can't put the slide out still, but it's pretty good. Those levelers have been giving you grief. Well, they're kind of tricky. They're not, I don't think, made to be used manual very much. And when I go to do it, you gotta put them down in pairs, fronts, back, sides, so it's just, and since I don't have an app, if I had an app on my phone, I would just be outside going like yeah. this and watching them, but I gotta run in and out and in and out. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. This particular RV came with the, the Barebone Basics uh, Lippert LCI One Control, and it does not include the app. Oh. Yeah, so no app. Bare bones. Yep, bare bones. But it's kind of hot, so we're gonna kick on the AC. That's uh, one thing we love doing at the overnight stops. We can run our AC all night if we need to. Another thing we like doing is running the air fryer. Yes, but AC is more important right now. It is. Let's get that going. You want me to do it? Ready? We have to turn the inverter on. Nope, it's on. Okay. Yeah, I've been leaving the inverter on 24-7 now. So we are having some water issues today. Not only did we run out of water, now we got inside, fill up the Berkey, and it's looking a little bit orange. So it's concerning. We're gonna let it run through the Berkey because it does go. Pick that top part up. It does go clear in the bottom. I can't believe how orange that is. And then look how clear it is down here. Well, that's a great testament to the Berkey. Yeah, the Berkey works. And it wasn't what 
I filled it up with because I saw this earlier in the toilet and I thought it was something different and I think it's just the bottom of the tank. It's the bottom of the tank. We need to do We need a, to clean it. We need to do a clean. <laughs> we don't need to hear about it. We know we need to clean it. We need to take care of this problem and we're on top of it. But it does get us to thinking about like in the future, we would love to invest in some sort of a big water filtration inline system because of the amount of water that we drink every day. We We've eat. had this for what, almost three years now? Yeah, now. we bought this when COVID hit and we were concerned about <laughs> surviving. It works great, but I think the amount of water we drink, we need something better. Yeah, we're running out of water. Um, I'm cooking dinner and I'm gonna use propane because it is hot and we decided we would rather save all of the batteries for our air conditioner. So they're gonna go against each other a little bit, but rather than put it all into the air fryer and the induction oven stovetop cooker, we're gonna save it for the AC. So tonight I am making stir fry and that is because I am running out of food. We are like running on fumes here and I'm super tired. I'm definitely under eaten today and I'm just like scraping this together. Veggies, I was lucky to find these in the fridge. We have cauliflower, peppers, carrots, onions, and I got some chicken. And then I'm just gonna throw some soy sauce and vinegar. And I love this koozie tip so that your metals, your glass on glass doesn't clink in your storage while you're driving. And then on my chicken, I have salt, pepper, ginger, coriander, red pepper flakes, onion powder. It's going to be delicious. And I like to do eat all these veg. They're on their way out the door. I'm gonna go grocery shopping tomorrow. When it comes to choosing, like at Cracker Barrel, you wanna get some food and patron for a thank you for the overnight stay. When it comes between dinner and breakfast, I would much rather make my own dinner the way that I want it with all these fresh veg. And then in the morning, it's really easy to just get like a nice protein heavy egg breakfast. And they also have other quality meats like chicken sausage, sirloin, things like that. And what I like about the menu here is that they show all the calories and stuff, which it's easier to get a breakfast and like eggs and just feel satisfied and out the door, get ready for a good driving day. So that's one tip for breakfast is just focus on eggs, egg whites, some protein. Vegetables, eh, you know, that's a little bit harder to do at Cracker Barrel, but they do have fresh fruit. So that would be an excellent option. I saw vegetables but it was like broccoli, carrots, yeah. cauliflower. I mean, I'm always encouraging fibrous vegetables at every meal, but realistically, I know that it's a little bit harder for people to go in to the Cracker Barrel in order, first of all, to stay away from the beignets, stay away from the pancakes and order eggs. That's a great start. Am I gonna ask you to get broccoli on top of it? That might be pushing my luck, right, Aaron? <laughs> Well, today we are gonna hit two states. We're gonna go right through Chicago and Illinois into Indiana. Easy drive today. Not an easy drive because Chicago is my least favorite city to drive through, especially when we might hit rush hour in the morning. Always a good night at Cracker Barrel. Good sleep, easy, breezy, no problems. So I was just chit-chatting with the neighbors and they are, in a bus coach and they're pulling a trailer and their license plates say Massachusetts and they are on their way to Sturgis. Oh, Sturgis, really? <laughs> yeah. So they have a big drive across the country, partially. And they said the guy actually used to build Cracker Barrels and he said that they like the RVers here because it adds a layer of safety for the employees because there's always somebody inside 24 hours to receive shipments. There's somebody inside a Cracker Barrel? That's what he said. Doing what? Receiving shipments. Bacon biscuits? Receiving truckloads of whatever, and so we kind of make them feel safe so that they're not just here alone. 
I thought that was super interesting. That is interesting. I didn't know that. I didn't either. The air conditioner and the battery did great. We woke up with like 43% on the battery. The air ran nice and smooth. We set it at 75. I turned it down a little bit because it got a little warm to like 72 or something. Uh -huh. And it was, uh, it's just nice to be able to do that overnight and get a little bit of Louis. What's ready, going on? He's ready to go. Louis's doing really good with the traveling and you know the changing of his environment. It's nice that we always have the RV, so he always has that safe place and the truck. But he's at seven and a half months now, almost eight months, and he's kind of getting in that little stage where he's growing up. He's an adolescent. Mm -hmm. He's a teenager. Sometimes he's sweet and sometimes he's moody. $27. $27? Yeah. You're kidding me. No. It was, that was $27. It must have saved us a grip of time though. Oh, I don't think so. I think I saw on the map like half an well, hour. She might have counted her axles wrong because. She said, it said four axles. That's two on the truck and two on the trailer. Okay. That's what the sign said. Yeah, $27.80. Wow. Even Louie's crying about it. Louie is upset about that. I don't know what we do with this. I think we have to mail it in. I'm going to pass it to the passenger to translate. There's a lot of little things on there. Portage. Oh, that's where you have to you have to look at where you're exiting and then pay that amount. Oh yeah, we did this done that before. a long time ago. Oh man, that was way on the east coast. Or, or maybe it was here. So how much is this going to be? It's like scratching off an anti-lottery ticket. I think we're going to be close to a hundred bucks total today in tolls. Oh my god. Thirty-nine dollars and thirty cents. That's what the ticket said. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it said on there. Forty dollar toll for an hour down the highway. I feel like the tolls are crazy this year. I don't know if they've gone up or what, but. Or we're just crazy and we don't we, remember. We just came a month ago from Indiana, right where we are now, up to Wisconsin and Minnesota. And then a month later, we came back this direction and it was $21 on the way up and somehow on the way down because we took a slightly different route through Chicago instead of around it. And it's over a hundred bucks. Crazy. Yeah. We just had two tolls that were $30 and $40. I mean, we should have known that going straight through Chicago would be more. That's that's like a no-brainer that I actually feel stupid for not stopping and thinking maybe we should drive around Chicago. So I'll take the blame on that one. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting this toll in Indiana. This we was we must not have taken 90 out of here. We must have taken like a road along the side. Yeah, we, we bypassed it. Yeah, well, it's a, I mean, most tolls are like a couple bucks here and a couple bucks there. Like, I mean, in Florida, you get dinged like a lot, but it's like two bucks, three bucks, four bucks, one dollar. Like, and right now you're seeing Aaron being like calm, talking about the tolls. I wish you would have seen him 20 minutes ago when he was digesting that ticket and he was going kind of.
<laughs> That's not true. I he wasn't. was venting about tolls, was talking about taxation. It was pretty funny. It is weird to have toll roads. Like if you don't grow up around tolls, it's odd. I There's remember There's no tolls in Minnesota. Exactly. Yeah. Which is what makes it weird because we didn't have tolls, so we're not really that used to them. I remember in 2019 we went to Florida. That was kind of our first experience driving from the van Florida back up and all the way up the East Coast yeah, yeah I mean but it wasn't a lot it was like it felt like a lot at the time but it was probably like 20 bucks um, and then we got hit big time on the East Coast when we did the bridges from like uh, Philadelphia to Boston I think that bridge was like $40 or something it was the most we've ever paid and then New York City was only like the tunnel was 30 bucks maybe i remember i don't remember which city it was it was so long ago i don't remember what the tolls were where like it's a blur but i remember the very first big one we went through it was actually manned by a woman an attendant and she told me the cost and i was like what and she goes you got dualies in the rear <laughs> and we made that joke like several times throughout the year because we had a dually yeah which and we felt like she charged us for duallys and not for dual axles in the rear. It was just dual tires, so I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. We felt ripped off. Hey, we're in Michigan. This is Michigan? That's what the map says. Yeah, right there. Oh, wow, we are Michigan. in Michigan. We're so close. This is three states today. We need Louis to pee here so he gets credit for the state. Louis! That's our rule for Louis to get credit. He has to take a little tinkle.